In the quest for the cure, I looked at the history and future of drug discovery. So what are all the drugs that we have today? Where do they come from? And where are we going in the future? What will the next generation of drugs look like that will tackle all of the very challenging diseases that we face today? The way drugs function is by interacting with, attaching to specific proteins within cells. And it turns out that all of the drugs that have ever been created interact with only 2% of the proteins in our cells. And the vast majority of the remaining proteins are considered undruggable, meaning most researchers think there's no possibility of making drugs that can interact with those proteins. If you have a, a tumor cell that has a mutation, and that mutation makes a protein that causes cancer but is inherently undruggable, there's no way to block the function of that protein, then the traditional approach would say that we're stuck at that point. I think the optimists are right and that we'll come up with new approaches, computational approaches, new kinds of molecules that can interact with these more difficult proteins and that together these approaches could be successful in targeting these undruggable proteins. So far we are at this stage. So you so have this one? Yes. So you haven't done the coupling? No, that's the next step. In my lab we're interested in combining biological and chemical methods. So the questions we have are in biology, like how does cell death operate and how does cell death operate in tumor cells and in neuronal cells leading to these disease processes. The approach that we use is inherently chemical, using chemistry, the methods and tools of chemistry where we design molecules, collections of molecules, we synthesize those in the laboratory, then we test those rapidly for their effects in cells. So this would be like, imagine you have a million uh, rings, and one of them is a true diamond. And so the question is, how do you sift through all of those quickly to figure out which one is the one of interest? And so if you just picked up each one and scrutinized it, it would take a long time. So you need what we call a high throughput method, a way of quickly testing each of these and see which of them uh, changed color or, 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 or suddenly gave out light or had a, had a particular optical signature then that would be a way that you could quickly search through these. So that's the kind of strategy that we use in testing these molecules. We add them to cells, we design an optical way to detect what was the effect in cells with some kind of light emission or absorption of the cells, and then we're able to quickly test all of these chemicals to see which is the one that we're interested in. So the question we had in this case was, is there a way to find a drug, a molecule, that can slide into this interaction and disrupt these two proteins. So what we've done in the laboratory is try to look for molecules that are lethal to tumor cells with that mutation without knowing in advance what proteins they might interact with. So maybe there would be another protein in the cell that if we interact with that protein would cause a selective death of those tumor cells with this undruggable mutant protein. And we've actually been successful in doing that. And this little molecule is one that we discovered a few years ago. We named it Erastin. It's a new molecule that hadn't been seen before. And this is one of the two out of a million tested that is able to selectively kill tumor cells with a particular mutation present. So my hope is that the, the students and undergraduates, even high school students who read the book and hear about the research that we're doing will get excited about this fundamental grand challenge in science of coming up with small molecules that can interact with all of these undruggable proteins and could lead to the next generation of scientists which could create the next generation of medicines.